sending data to AQS via CREST. So to send your data to AQS, you have to have every single record, level one and level two, reviewed. And we showed that in the next video. But to actually get it through to AQS, there's one step you have to do in AQS first. So let's say that I'm sending data from my site, and these are the previous files that I've sent. And the first time you see this screen, it will show no submissions to AQS. I click all the way down at the bottom left, Add, and that is a selection pane that lets me choose what data I want to send to AQS. So if you're monitoring for multiple parameters, you can check which one. It's very common for people just to send their pollutant data, for example, to AQS. And then what is important is over here on the right. So this has to match exactly what is in AQS. So my AQS username is ROE, the screening group name is ITEP training, and the CDX user, for some reason, has to all be in caps. So this is what you have to set up in AQS to get your data from CREST into AQS. So this is appropriate for me, I think. What if I'm a new person, I got my AQS user ID, but I don't know the name of the screening group. And again, it has to be exactly as it is here. So let's go into AQS. So to go into AQS, I always just Google from the beginning EPA AQS data. And that takes me to this familiar page where you see this blue ball over at the right. You click the blue ball and it automatically downloads a JavaScript to your computer. You have to have this JavaScript on your computer in order to run AQS and you have to get into AQS at least once a year. So let's go into the downloads. And you can see I've done this a few times, but I do it every time in case they change the Java, JavaScript. And it may be that you have to open as administrator. So it is going to be open with a program called Java Launcher. And it may be that you have to do this on your home computer because this is not consistent with modern day security requirements. But we have to do this. Click Java Launcher, and it says, really, you don't want to open this. And I say, yes, I really want to open this. And then it starts this. Uh, never say update. I never want to update Java. What you want to do at this point is, I never check this box. Instead, I run this twice. Run, and then it says again, run. And now it takes you into AQS. So this is a screen that the Java launcher opens up on your computer. The database for actual production data is going to be AQS production. And so you'll always have that there. And then click Connect. And now it says, oh, it opens up a browser window, or you may have to do that. And you say, OK, you got to log in using login.gov. This is something that you have to set up ahead of time, but you can do it. And you say, we already have an account. I agree without reading the agreement. Success, you have been successfully authenticated. Now, this may actually take you to two-factor authentication. Uh, Login.gov might have to send you a text. But if you're doing it for the second or third time today, it doesn't ask you that. So now we can go back. And now, where is that Java screen? It is somewhere on your computer, um, usually down in the dock. Please log in using your browser. We did that. OK. And now it says, are you a read-only user or screening group access? You have to have a screening group in AQS to send your data to AQS. Now, we have a, a AQS site, 9001, in Coconino County. And the naming of this screening group, the name of this screening group has to be exactly as it's shown here in, if we go back to Crest, exactly here. So what's shown here, AQS screening group here, what's shown here, ITEP training, that screening group has to match exactly what you see when you log into AQS for this screening group. Okay, so we got that, all caps here and all caps 
in this submission account screen for AQS in Crest. All right, so we say, okay. And now it says, okay, what do you wanna do? Well, first of all, I always turn tribal mode on. And then you go to admin, security. And what you have to check here is the gateway user ID. So if you want to use the default gateway user ID, which Karen does when she sends her data to AQS, and it's totally fine, I will maintain that CDX account, but you see it has, if I typed in here my email in lowercase, it wouldn't work. It has to be exactly how it is shown here in the Exchange Network user ID and the Gateway user ID. Now, let me show you if you had your own Gateway user ID, you could put that in there, for example. You could type in your own Gateway user ID. If you've been loading water data to EPA via CDX, this will be the same Gateway user ID, at least right now, October 23rd, 2024. Uh, AQS will be changing at some point in the past, but it hasn't changed in the 25 years I've been accessing it. The good thing is that you don't have to change this. If you want to use the default one for your data in Crest, that's totally fine. If you wanted to use your own CDX account, you could click here, Change. And here you have to make sure the AQS user ID is exactly your AQS user ID. They're longer now, mine is so old, it's just three digits. The AQS screening group name. Now, if you wanna leave the default global CDX account, that's fine, but you just need to make sure that you log in at least once to AQS. You go to admin, security, it opens up this panel and this right here, these two values, need to match exactly what then, if you don't want to use the global, then you could put this in. So whatever your CDX user ID and your CDX password is, you would type that in there. I don't see any reason for doing that, and I would use mine, but if you've got one and you're always using it, then just uncheck this box and type your CDX user ID and your CDX password in there. Once you do that, save the changes and then test and Crest will confirm that your CDX user and your CDX password work. So I'm gonna recheck this here. So when I go to load data to AQS, in this case, generous Karen Shaw from Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation has allowed me to use her information for how she sends data to AQS. So she's old like me, and we have three-digit AQS user IDs, you're may maybe longer. Her screening group name when she logs in is exactly this, not in all caps, Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation, comma, AZ in caps. So that has to match exactly what she sees when she logs into AQS. Once you set that up once, and again, you could just use the default CDX user, then your data can be sent to AQS.